In this video, we'll explore how to blend Voronoi and rectangular patterns for landscape designs using point or curve attractors. By adjusting parameters like proximity influence, you can create various alternative layouts. These are some of the possibilities you can achieve with this method. So, let's start from scratch. We'll start with the rectangular component to generate the grid of cells. It needs the cell size and grid extent. I'll set the cell size to 0.25 meters and define the grid as 52 by 32. From this grid, we only need the points which we'll use to create Voronoi cells. I'll pass these points directly to the Voronoi component and flatten them so they are placed in the same group. This gives us a similar grid, but made of Voronoi cells, which we can easily manipulate later. Now the boundary extends too far. So, I'll use the bounding box component. I'll connect the grid cells to it, flatten the input, and select union box to get a single region. This will serve as our bounding region for the Voronoi component. Next, we move the points randomly to create more organic Voronoi cells. I'll expand it here to free up space. In between, we'll add a move component. We need to give a random vector to each point to see the effect. Using list length, we can determine how many points we have, then pass that to the random vector component, which will serve as our translation vectors. We can see some results now, but you can't get this component by default. Let's make a random vector generator using native components. For this, I'll drop in the vector XOEC component and two random components, one for X and one for Y. The random component needs range, count, and random seed. I'll set the list length as the count and use a range of minus one to one for both components. These values will be used as the X and Y coordinates. Pass these random vectors to our translation. Now we can see some results, but some cells are overlapping. This is because those components are generating similar random lists. I'll give a different seed, so they generate a completely different list of coordinates. You can play around with those seeds to get different Voronoid patterns. I'll clean this up and rename it to Random Vector. I'll expand the space here and place it there to keep everything well organized. Next, we'll control the location of the Voronoi cells and how they blend with the previous rectangular cells. Regions closer to something will turn into Voronoi cells. In between vector XOAZ and the translation, we'll work on controlling the Voronoi influence. I'll expand to get more space, and in between, I'll drop an amplitude component. This will let us control how the points are randomized. I have six points in Rhino. You can drop a random point in the region using the point command. I'll reference them using a point container. Right-click, set multiple points, and select your points. Now, we'll pull the grid points towards those attractor points, and based on the distance, we'll influence the vectors. We need to remap these distances to have more control over the influence, so I'll drop a remap numbers component. The distance will be passed directly to the value, and the source domain can be obtained using the bounds component. For the target domain, we'll use a construct domain component. This is a basic remapping setup, and once remapped, we can pass it directly to the amplitude component. Now we can see that the Voronoi cells far away from the points are more rectangular, but it's not very visible. We need to affect only a certain region while keeping others rectangular. In between, I'll add a minimum component to clamp the distances. Now we can better see the influence. Only certain region are turned into Voronoi cells. You can also create a circle and use this value as the radius to see how far the influence goes. Now, let's say you want to create a road design where the Voronoi cells follow the road. You can create your path using a NURBS curve or polyline, then reference it with a curve container. Without changing anything, you can feed it into the pull point component. You will have similar control as with the points, but for this video, I'll stick to pointed tractors. Let's group and rename this setup to proximity based remapping. Rename the inputs to point and attractors for later use. 
Next, we will scale down the cells closer to the attractor using the same proximity strategy to create more gaps. The cells will pass to geometry for scaling, and the center of scaling will be the centroid of each cell. The scaling factor will be based on proximity, so I'll go over our previous setup, copy it, and move it forward. Expand our scaling setup, and in between, we'll place our proximity setup. The centroids will connect to the points, and the remap values will act as the scaling factor. I'm getting a warning here, because scaling by zero is impossible, so I'll increase the domain's starting values. Now we have more control over the gaps, but I want to add one more feature to create larger Voronoi cells as we approach the points while still keeping the gaps. I will use a combination of discontinuity, move, and polyline. This extracts the control points and recreates the cells using polylines. In between, we can control the movement of points away from the attractors. I'll go over the previous proximity setup, copy it, and bring it forward. The control points will be our new points. Since this is in a tree structure, I'll flatten the bounds, so they all use the same remapping domain. Unlike before, we can't directly use the remapped values for translation because we need vectors, not numbers. For this, we'll use vector 2 point and amplitude. The control points will be our vector start points, and the pulled points will be the vector end points. This vector will pass to amplitude, which will be controlled by the remapped values, and the output will serve as our translation vectors. The cells are pulling toward the center, but we want the opposite. So between, I'll pass them through the reverse component. Most of the time, the cells closer to the attractor get distorted. I want to keep them in place while increasing their scale, so we get more planting area and fix this problem. To fix this, we'll adjust the location of the attractor. We want to make sure the attractors are placed at the center of the closest cells. For this, I'll use the area and closest point components. First, determine the center of each cell, then use closest point to find the closest cell center to the attractor. This will be our new attractor point. You can test different results by playing around with the scaling factor, Voronoid factor, and how the cells push away from the attractor. This will give you various outcomes. For the final tweaks, we need to convert the cells into surfaces. I'll use the bounding surface component to create surfaces from the cells and then extrude them in the Z direction to give them thickness. I'll apply a custom preview and a generic white material so we can clearly see the result. Next, I want to set a border for the plating area. I'll flatten the geometry and use list item to select the center cells. The index will come from the closest point component, which will help select only the center cells. I'll remove the same geometry from the previous one using Cull Index with the same index we just obtained. For the center cells, I'll offset them inward using a negative value. The offset curve will be merged with the previous one. I'll graft and simplify both inputs so that we get two curves in the same group, which will be passed to boundary surface. Once we have the border, we can combine it with the previous extrusion setup to give them thickness together. So this will be the final result. By just changing a few parameters, like proximity influence, you can create various alternative landscape designs with the script we've covered so far. If you're interested in the final Grasshopper scripts, you can access them by becoming a Patreon supporter, along with other exclusive content. If you enjoy this tutorial format, I've created a playlist for both beginner and advanced users with similar content. Check them out here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.